Hello everyone, welcome to the Curry Rupturer Project. I am Daniel and today I will be sharing a short story of Minecraft and some of the screenshots that I've created playing Minecraft. I will not be including Technic or Technic Launcher. This was a Minecraft mod pack that I was playing for a few years. So this is the earliest screenshot that I have. Now I'm just going to leave this here and I'm going to first tell you about what happened before I was able to obtain this screenshot. Unfortunately, I can't get any of the screenshots earlier as I would have liked to, probably because I didn't know about the F2 key back then. I actually recommend using the F2 key in Minecraft. It allows you to really get your screenshots together, really. <laughs> yes. So this is everything before that screenshot. So when I first discovered Minecraft, this was a version when spiders were brown and you could only have up to five worlds. There was only survival mode. Now at the time, I was running on an Apple Mac. Not many updates later, spiders were changed to black, which was in the 0.27 survival test 10. Yeah, I've been on Minecraft for a while apparently. <laughs> when I was playing around, I dug a hole out, then for no reason I started seeing the hearts go down. I left the world then came back into it and the hearts were still going down, so I let the player respawn. This is one of my first experiences where the player dies for no reason in a hole of sand. <laughs> All you can see was the sky bomb. <laughs> so I started a survival world and dug a small hole of steps. I still do not know where that world is anymore, which is unfortunate because I do want to find it and try and especially look in MC Edit and see what it actually looks like. Because I really want to know where this original house that I'll tell you about later actually was. Now I did not have any torches so I went for a wander for coal. Now I had plans to set up a large chest in the middle of it and dig a uh, dig further. After a while of exploring I decided to return back to my hole. Unable to find it I kept on looking and then gave up and started a house in the middle of nowhere. Now, I want you all to know that you should always be able to link your spawn point to your house in Minecraft. Even if you have a bed, you can never be certain that that bed may be occupied or that someone might have destroyed or something might have destroyed it. So always make sure you can link your spawn point back to your house. If you can't do that, you've got a serious issue. Now, this... Um, now this house was looking great and I had a mine with torches, I wanted to go exploring so instead of using a compass like you'd normally do in Minecraft, I was a noob. So I built a giant tower and I kept building this tower higher and higher and higher. Uh, unfortunately I didn't get that far. Now please, use a beacon instead. When I was playing at the time, I did not have beacons. In fact, they didn't even have beacons in the game. So while I was building this tower with lots of items on me, I accidentally fell off, and I just realised the hard way. <laughs> what having a house, you can, <laughs> what having a house you can get to, actually get to from your spawn point means. When I respawned without any items, I was at my spawn point with this house that wasn't a house at all. I had so desperately been looking for was right there and it was literally just uh, a bit of dirt maybe some stone with a hole into the ground so I built a new house that was even better than the second one that I had built from far away Now, from that I have learnt a valuable lesson from Minecraft. Never build a house too far away from your spawn point. From there, creative mode came out. I started working on quite a few Minecraft custom maps. When I finally got a laptop, I was using it for World of Tanks. I continued to build Minecraft custom maps in Minecraft. When the Minecraft Scary Update came out, this is version 1.4.2, I became interested in flying bats, <laughs> which I now call Chiroptera, and I commonly call Chiroptera. In fact, most of my YouTube channel is now based around Chiroptera. 
I set her out research and then became a Chiroptera lover. From here I'm going to explain the screenshots that I've collected. Hey everyone, I'm Daniel. Uh, it's been t two weeks since I started recording this video and I wanted to let you know that before I start I am not going to also be including images of a uh, some of the custom maps I've been playing and I also won't include images of some of the servers that I did briefly play on while playing Minecraft. So this is the earliest screenshot we have of Minecraft. This is what the game looked like before we decided to enable a resource pack. This is what it looks like afterwards. This is me uh, in my first attempt to start what is now called the Nethercart Challenge. This is some glitch in Minecraft. I don't know who took this. More nether cart challenge. So the nether cart challenge required quite a bit of setup. Uh, that also included finding a village which is part of the last part of it. Oh, this uh, video may contain a few spoilers of the nether cart challenge. Once the overworld stuff was set up and then it had to be tested, some lighting was placed to help make it easier, mainly make it look better. It was a matter of getting into the nether. So this is what the nether originally looks like before I then started messing around with it, uh, filling up every single gap in the wall, every single one. <laughs> So basically the whole wall was, yeah. uh, back to the nether again, yeah I was a bit concerned, I was a bit confused about this effect, I don't know how this screenshot ended up getting recorded but I don't think redstone works like this, besides that's supposed to be glowstone so I don't even know how glowstone uh, can fail. <laughs> Here it was a matter of just building everything out. That was adding things, <laughs> TNTing a few things, figuring out the traps, uh, figuring out the numbers to the traps, because quite a few of the traps have to be numbered. This is the glass tunnel that I worked on. <laughs> so you're basically between lava and glass trying to figure out how to assemble the whole thing together. Working on part two. This was interesting. <laughs> trying to figure out the uh, lava effect that was occurring, how to get around it. Ended up just placing a bit more nether rack. Yeah, so each one was built manually. You can also get a bit of an idea on how the texture pack that we were using was affecting how everything looked compared to how it really looked. Lighting was done by putting a hole through every single level and then just placing the lighting in. Yeah, some things take a while and that's probably the most annoying thing there is. This was uh, light to torch I think it was, which was the idea of creating a redstone or a simple redstone project. Uh, this one I'm simply messing around with the Minecraft height mechanics going up really high and falling and letting the game... <laughs> yeah, sometimes you mess around with Minecraft doing random things and you'll see quite a bit of that during all of these as well. Redstone takes a long time and this definitely took a long time. <laughs> Back to the nether cart challenge. 
figuring out how it looks. Discovering there's lava above you when you're digging things out, so then you go messing around with lava, and apparently screenshotting it was worth it. This was used for custom tank, what I call Daniel's custom tank. You will gradually see the whole thing get assembled together. It was a matter of figuring out where everything was going to go, figuring out what was required and then putting it in their place. There's a village nearby so let's just take some screenshots of that, run away for a little bit and see what's around the place. There's a lot of parts of this tank that you can't actually see unless you start digging it up. Uh, some of these I will show later. This tank was very huge and took quite a while, so... <laughs> Good news is I have been able to get this tank finished since I started. Notice the wheels don't look very round. They're yeah, sort of round. So my idea behind building this tank is mainly because I decided I wanted to build a tank but of course I didn't want to just keep a plain standard regular tank I wanted to do something excessive so I did Yes, the tank runs on something called Fire Mint Um, I guess I'll describe the engineering to you then. How it basically works is Green Fire Mint is one of the many versions of Fire Mint and they have a height and it's highly flammable. Uh, 